What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus tells them to look to Israel, or as he put it, to learn the parable of the fig tree. Let's read about it. Matthew 24, verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree, says our Lord. When its branches already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know summer is near. So you also, when you see all of these things, know it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. We'll stop there. Now Israel is compared on more than one occasion in the Bible to a fig tree. In Hosea 9.10, God says, I have found Israel as the first fruits of a fig tree. Joel and Jeremiah also refer to Israel as a fig tree. So Jesus is telling us that the rebirth of Israel is a sign of the end. But listen, not just a sign, it's the super sign. You know, when you go to the uh, McDonald's or a place like that, you might ask them to supersize it. Well, this is the super sign that God has given the regathering of the Jews. Over in Ezekiel 37, I referred to it, but God said in verse 11 uh, to Ezekiel that he was to go to a graveyard. And as Ezekiel stood there, bodies burst out of the grave, bones came together, muscle was attached to the bone, flesh was attached to the muscle. And then God told him what it all meant. He said, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy to them and say, thus says the Lord, behold, O my people, I'll open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you to the land of Israel. Could God have been any more specific? Who would have thought such a thing possible during World War II? If you were a Jew living in the Warsaw ghetto, fearing uh, the Nazis coming to arrest you, could you believe such a thing could happen? If you were one of those Jews in one of those concentration camps set up by the Nazis like Auschwitz or Treblinka or Ravensbrück, would you have ever thought that there would be a homeland for the Jewish people again. If Hitler had continued in the pattern he was following, we would have seen a great many of the Jewish people wiped out. But thankfully, that war came to an end and thankfully the United States of America stepped in. But now we look at, uh, that's worth clapping for, we're Americans. Eh? <laughs> but to return to the homeland, this seems unthinkable. It seems impossible. But God said this would happen. And on May 14th, 1948, a modern day miracle took place. The establishment of the nation of Israel. David Ben-Gurion, who is sort of like the George Washington of modern Israel, made this statement on that day. Ezekiel 37 has been fulfilled and the nation Israel is hearing the footsteps of the Messiah, end quote. Fascinating statement from a prime minister recognizing that prophecy was fulfilled. On Holocaust Remembrance Day, January 27th of 2010, in Auschwitz, Poland, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, made this amazing statement, and I quote, we have returned to our homeland from every corner of the earth. The Jewish people rose from ashes. Dry bones became covered with flesh. A spirit filled them, and they lived and stood at their own feet. As Ezekiel prophesied, then uh, Netanyahu went on to quote from Ezekiel 37. So here is this modern miracle. Yet it's such a tiny little piece of land. I mean, you think of all the nations in the world and all the cities in the world. Why do we hear so much about tiny little Israel? Did you know that Israel at its widest point is nine miles wide? The entire country is about the size of New Jersey. The nation Israel is 154th among the nations uh, of the world. You could fit 32 states of Israel in the state of Texas. That shows you how little it is. Yet you can hardly pick up a newspaper or go to a news website or turn on the television without some mention of the conflict today in the Middle East and specifically Israel and even more specifically Jerusalem. Why is this? The answer is quite simple. Israel is at the eye of the hurricane of the great events of the end times. She occupies center stage in God's drama of the ages. She and other players are behind the prophetic curtain and they're hitting their marks. You know, like when you go to see a play 
And, and all the performers are behind the curtain and they all hit their mark. They get ready. And as the curtain opens, the play begins. And this is what's happening. All the players are hitting their marks. No, the curtain is not open yet, but it will soon. And this is all predicted long ago by the Hebrew prophets and those who have sought to eradicate or destroy the Jewish people or their nation have paid a heavy price because God made a promise to Abraham years ago and to his descendants. And the Lord said, I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. Look at the nations that have tried to destroy Israel. They lie on the ash heap of history today. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Rome, and more modern times, Spain and Germany, and perhaps very soon, Russia. One of the reasons that God has blessed the United States of America is because we have stood by the Jewish people and we have stood by the state of Israel. Now let me make a provocative statement. It's true. <clears throat> let me make a provocative statement. America needs Israel more than Israel needs America. Now, we've been a great ally for them and we've given them a lot of money and we've done a lot for them and God has blessed us. One of the reasons God has blessed our country is because we've blessed them, but we need them because we need the blessing of God and that's why I, I have great concern over the new tension that we have with the nation of Israel today. I hope that changes. But Israel has fought ever since her declaration as a state. Here's 65 later, she's uh, 65 years later, even longer now. She's closing in on, our seven, on her 70th anniversary. She's still under attack. Pretty much on every border, she is under attack by Islamic extremists. You have suicide bombers, homicide bombers, rocket and missile attacks, genocidal threats from Middle Eastern neighbors, and political pressure from Europe, and now even to some degree the United States. Jerusalem is right there at the eye of the storm. And this is exactly what God said would happen in the last days. Not Washington, D.C., not Moscow, not Beijing, not Norco, <laughs> or Irvine. Jerusalem. This is what God said would happen. Zechariah 12, 3. God says, I'll make Jerusalem and Judah like an intoxicating drink to all the nearby nations that send their armies to besiege Jerusalem. On that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone and a burden for the world. Jesus said in Luke 21, 20, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you will know that the time of its destruction has arrived. And one of Iran's leaders came out and said recently, quote, we must spare no effort in liberating holy Jerusalem and cutting off the hands of the infidels from this holy site, end quote. So here we see nation, the nation of Israel regathered. We see Jerusalem as their capital. 